Welcome back to More Freight, More Problems. I'm Cassandra Gaines, and I created More Freight, More Problems for you guys out there who, as you're growing and you're getting more revenue, you're dealing with more problems. I'm going to help you get ahead of the problems and efficiently resolve them when you get when you hit them. I notice a lot of my clients spend a lot of time spinning their wheels with problems. So I created this series so that you guys will have a resource. Today's episode, we're going to talk about your insurance coverage for your auto policy. Uh, this specific podcast is designed for a logistics company and designed for uh, those who are often negotiating their customer shipper contracts uh, requiring auto coverage and those who are making risk-related decisions and need to truly understand what the heck even is your auto policy. So I call it an auto policy, right? There's a lot of different names out there, but in essence, this policy is usually around $1 million for a small brokerage, um, and it covers third-party claims, among some other things, but it covers third-party claims. We think worst-case scenario, the carrier that the broker hired injured someone along the road, and the shipper got sued, or the broker was sued. This happens frequently in our, in our industry, you guys. Um, and I, and I, I speak on this frequently as well. Uh, I can do another podcast about third party liability claims, but in essence, we buy the auto policy, hoping that if that claim comes, God forbid, uh, that we have some type of protection. Uh, often, uh, it's a crapshoot. I'm just going to be honest here, guys. When I review most of my clients' auto uh, policy language, I mean, there's tons of exclusions um, and there's situations where the policy wouldn't even provide coverage. Um, And when I think about my clients' operations, because I know them very well, I've worked in-house at tons of different brokers and carriers, um, I understand I can see where those exclusions apply. So your auto policy, really, truly, you shouldn't rely on it too much. Um, you should get it for worst case scenario, you get it for our customers, but don't completely think every day that you have coverage. So let's talk about those exclusions. Um, actually first I should talk about the coverage, right? Uh, we talked, talked about the scenario of the coverage, um, but I left one out. Uh, the other scenarios where we often contractually agree with our customers to indemnify and defend them if they ever get yanked into a lawsuit. This happens, you guys, uh, because uh, the customer's trailer will have their name on it. The customer will be a bigger brand name. The customer's name's on the bill of lading. That's how the plaintiff attorney is identifying who to sue. So frequently, the customers will get pulled into lawsuits. The other situation, I'm going to just throw this in as a side note, that I've seen quite a bit of litigation uh, with brokers is when... um, the driver is injured on the customer's property because of something the customer did or something that the driver even did. And the customer is yanked into some type of litigation. Those can be quite expensive. Sometimes the brokers can be dragged in because they were contractually obligated to indemnify and defend their customer. Indemnifying and defending means that if the customer sued, that um, you are going to step in, broker, because you've contractually agreed to, and pay for their uh, legal counsel, and you're going to pay for any damages that are allocated. It can be quite expensive, uh, and it's a stressful situation. When you review your shipper broker contracts or your customer contracts, uh, those there are going to be top provisions, and I give a lot of speeches all over the country about this. There are top provisions that you're going to want to stay focused on. The indemnification provision and the insurance provisions, those are what you really stay focused on. Cargo claims as well, and there's some other stuff. But I bring up indemnification because it's very applicable in with regards to your auto policy, which is what covers your indemnification obligations. So this is a lot. Uh, I'm going to move in pretty fast, but it's because I know I'll lose people's attention and I'm trying to, trying to get you guys to absorb all the information that has to do with insurance because you can't avoid it. And your customers will know when you don't know what you're talking about. So... Back to the exclusions. When I review um, a contract, a shipper contract for my customer, um, I always ask them, almost always ask them, for their insurance policy as well. Not the not the language, the deck language that lists out the amounts. I need to know that, of course. 
I'm looking into the legal language because I want to know where the coverage is and isn't. That way I know how much risk we're accepting with these contracts. So let's just imaginary make up a shipper. Uh, let's, say, let's, let's say we're contracting with Louis Vuitton, right? They give us a whole bunch of lanes. It's going to be a lot of money. We're really excited. Um, in and out of Texas, we're state for theft and accidents, by the way. Um, I whispered that. So uh, the other thing is, uh, goodness, my whispering just got me sidetracked. Okay, anyhow, Louis Vuitton. You're reviewing the contract, right? Louis Vuitton, big name, lots of money. They're going to give you a bunch of lanes. It's going to be great. So what they want you to do, um, beyond giving you your firstborn to them, um, is they want you to indemnify and defend them for any lawsuits, and they're going to want you to have specific auto insurance um, and they're going to list out all the clauses too. So what you're going to do is if you don't have me uh, or someone equivalent to me or you're not listening to this podcast, or you don't have time, you're going to tell your ins- give the contract to your insurance broker who's going to give it to your insurer and ask if there's coverage and where there's not coverage because there's going to be lots of situations where there's not coverage. One, the contract wasn't even approved by your insurance company. There are some insurers out there that require the contracts to be approved. They want to review them. Try and blame them. Two, there's going to be a situation where the shipper or the customer that made you contractually indemnify and defend them actually did something wrong and that plays into the lawsuit or whatever the dispute is going on. There's no coverage for that. Um, But that's the least of my concerns. The other one is uh, that there are situations where if you broker holding yourselves out as a carrier to the customer, you may not be coverage under your policy. How about when we're talking about carriers, how you vet your carriers? Um, Some insurance companies are going to have certain ways they want you to vet the carriers and certain things that you need to do. Collecting insurance certificates, verifying authority, blah, blah, blah. All that's great and dandy. But some of you out there have your carrier sales folks do some of that work before tendering the shipment what if one of them forgets and then that carrier gets in an accident and then your customer sued and then your customer gives you the contract and says, you're supposed to pay for my defense now and you give it to the insurance and the insurance that this carrier didn't even have authority. Where's your insurance certificate you're supposed to sit? Why didn't you vet him this way? Why didn't you do that? Oh, you probably had a Lloyd's of London policy, by the way. Those things are garbage. Um, but you see where I'm going with this. There's lots of situations where you might not have covered. Woo. I just threw a lot at you guys. Most people, when they listen to podcasts, they speed them up. Yours might want to slow me down. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let you digest this. I'm going to remind you that I'm not your lawyer. Everything I say could be different depending on the facts, depending on the insurance policy, the insurance language, the state laws. Need I go on? Take this as it is. It's free education, you guys. So please follow me. Please send me questions that you have. That way I can address them and give me more content to do this stuff with. And remember that little Cassandra is only little Cassandra. Just There's no big company behind me. There's nothing going on. I'm just doing this for free in between client projects. So please support me continue to support me. I'm trying to put this out there because there's not a lot of resources. So take care and listen to my other podcasts.